one of the things they found with a lot of extensive testing, as they were trying to figure out how many air movers you should use uh, on a room, they did a lot of testing in flood structures, warehouses, infrared cameras, moisture sensors, a lot of testing to find out how many, it, how, how many square feet it would dry. Well, there's a lot of different types of flooring. There's a lot of different types of air movers, and they were trying to come up with kind of a general idea. And they found out, if you look at this, this is a actually a job I did years ago. And I just think this is interesting. Two virtually identical air movers. They are slightly different, but almost the same. And in the same crawl space, and in, in the same amount of time, the one on the left did quite a bit more square feet than the one on the right. You know, this looks like um, like 70 square feet, and like 50 square feet. I don't know if that's what it is, but those are the numbers we're going to use. So it makes it sound good. But you can see visually that different air movers will do different amounts. And that's what they found out was as they were training, uh, doing their testing, that one air mover, the average for all the types of air movers and all the types of flooring, the average was one air mover would do somewhere between 50 and 70 square feet. So when we're doing our floor, that's the range that we get. And so the air mover calculations are by the room, not by the drying chamber like our dehumidifier is going to be. These are by each individual room. We calculate separately for how many air movers it gets. And I'm going to go through those calculations here in just a moment. But I want you to keep in mind that it's always going to be a range. It's never going to be that room. Well, I shouldn't say never. I'll tell you why in a minute. It's not going to be that room gets 13 air movers. It's that room gets between 9 and 13 air movers or 6 and 8 or 22 and you know 32 or whatever it is. And so one way to kind of visualize that is if you were going to paint the inside of your house, you'd measure up all the square feet of the surfaces you want to paint, all your walls and ceiling. You go to the paint store, you pick up a gallon of paint. Now, I'm not a painter, so I don't know what the numbers actually are. I'm just making this up. But you look at the back of the paint can, it does not say... This gallon of paint will paint 427 square feet because they have no idea what you're painting. Are you painting raw wood that's going to suck it up? Is it something that's already primed? Are you going to roll it? Are you going to spray it? Are you going to brush it? There's so many factors of how and what you're going to paint that the can of paint will say something like this gallon of paint will do between four and 500 square feet. On average, with all the different ways people paint, that's about what you can expect. So I go, okay, so I take the total square feet of what I'm going to paint. I would divide by 400 and by 500. And that says, okay, you need for your house between nine and 12 gallons of paint. It's a range. It's not going to be exact because every job's different. So I'm going to say, okay, I buy nine gallons of paint. I go home and paint, 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 paint. And maybe that does it. If it doesn't, I go back and buy another one. If that doesn't, I go buy another one. But I can expect that it's going to be between about nine and 12 gallons based on that average. Same thing for us. We go in and say for the floor, here's the total square foot of wet floor. I'm going to divide it by 50 and by 70. And that's the range of air movers that I get for that floor. A little bit different for walls and ceiling. But I want to kind of get that in your head. It's, it's going to be a range between the low range and the high range as we go through it. The S500 tells us air movers should be set up to provide continuous airflow across all affected wet surfaces, floors, walls, ceilings, and framing until they're dry, until the meter says they're dry. The number of air movers needed can vary between projects depending upon the build-out density, obstructions to airflow, the amount and type of wet affected materials. There's a lot of factors in there. That's why it's going to be a range, and you figure out within that range how many you need for that actual job. The number of air movers needed can vary. And so here's the calculations. I go in, it's by the room. I do this for each room that I'm working on. Because it's a room, it starts with one air mover. Okay, so I'm going to have a low range and a high range. They both start with one, and I work my way down on the chart. In addition to that, I get one air mover for every 50 to 70 square feet of wet affected floor. So I say, okay, I measure the total square feet of what's wet. I take that number, I divide it by 50 and by 70, and that's the range of what I get for the floor because that's the average they found out that air movers would do on floors. In addition to that, I get another air mover for every 100 to 150 square feet of wet ceiling and walls above two feet. Two things I want to point out there. Air movers trying to dry drywall is more effective than a plywood subfloor. So I get less of them. Instead of one for every 50 to 70, I get one for every 100 and one to 150. I combine my walls and ceilings together, do the square footage, and divide by 100 and 150. But this is another important aspect right here. Um, above two feet. I'm working on drying my floor. So I'm going to put my air mover against the wall right here. 
And the reason I do that at about a 45 degree angle is it's going to hit the wall and it's going to come out and pick up my 50 to 70 square feet of floor. So I actually put it on the perimeter of the room to start the drying process on the floor. And then in the middle of the floor where I don't have airflow, you know, as far as it comes out where there's no airflow, I'm going to put other air movers out there going across the middle or maybe some of these axial fans like this one right here. You can get it on a stand. So it's pointing right down to the floor and moving it out that direction. But if I have an air mover right here that's hitting the wall and bouncing out and drying up this 50 to 70 square feet of floor, they also found out that it's hitting the wall and going up and on average was drying about two feet of the wall. So they said, we're going to let you calculate and give air movers for the floor. But when you're doing the walls and ceiling, you don't get to add that two feet in again because it's getting dried with the air movers you've got for the floor. So when you calculate the walls and ceiling, you have to remove that bottom two feet and act like it's not there. So if this wall was wet four feet up, I would only count the top two feet of my square footage. If this was a 10 foot tall wall and it was wet, if it's a 10 foot tall wall, I'd only count the top eight feet and the bottom two feet. And ne this never gets added in anywhere. It's always just free with the floor. Another thought to just keep in mind is how far away do I put my air movers? If I have one on the wall right here, how far away does the next one go? Well, it depends on how far the air is coming out of this air mover. And so if I have, and they're all different, they might be as little as nine feet. They might be as much as 14, 15, 16 feet. So for me, if I, and I don't want to touch the wall, keep it out just a little bit. If I have an air mover right here that's blowing out, I don't want to have another air mover four feet in front of it because this is going to pick up the moisture here and it's going to get sucked into the next air mover. So now it's pushing wet air across the surface and that's not very good for drying. And so I personally am going to go out and you can use an anemometer, smoke pencil. I just go out with my finger until I don't feel any more airflow. It might be 10 or 12 feet out there. And as soon as I don't feel it, for me personally, this is Darren Foot, not the S500. I come back about six or eight inches. I want a little bit of overlap. I don't want to have a spot where I'm missing that section and I've got to redry that. So I come back a little bit. I've got a tiny bit of overlap. And then when I come back the next day, let's say it's going out 11, 12 feet, it's going to be the driest right in front of that air mover. And so I might move it forward a couple of feet and just keep it on the wettest area. Okay, so just a couple of thoughts. So that's why it says here above two feet. So I never calculate that bottom two feet when I'm doing walls and ceiling. I ignore the bottom two feet. That's just free with the floor. That's just, it's already been included. It's already been figured in as far as that goes. I also get to add on the next step, one additional air mover for any inset or offset greater than 18 inches. And the reason we get to do that is because it's a disruption in airflow. If I put an air mover right here, it's gonna blow that direction for a ways. And I put another one right here, it's gonna blow that direction for a ways. And another one right here, it's gonna hit that wall and it's gonna force it to turn. If this air mover right here is going out 12 feet and 12 feet, this one might only go eight feet because that bend's definitely gonna slow it down and impede the airflow, but I'm gonna, it's gonna turn the corner. If I put another air mover right here, it's gonna come up, another air mover right here. If I put one right here, it's gonna come up and turn the corner that way, but nothing's gonna push it into that bay window. So where I've lost that airflow, I get to put another, because this is more than 18 inches, I get another air mover right here to pick up that break in the airflow. Boom, I need another one right here. If I have an inset, let's say that I have, uh, you know, that this is, uh, let's say 20 inches by 20 inches, and there's some furnace ducting in there. Same thing, the airflow is gonna come up and hit it and shoot out this direction. I need another air mover to make up for that break. And so you can actually see that right here in my office. So I've got this wall right here, it comes here, it goes here and then it drops in right there. So if I had an air mover right here, it's gonna hit that and come shooting straight out. I would need another air mover here to make up for that break coming around the corner. And so anytime there is an inset or an offset that's greater than 18 inches, I get to add another air mover to make up for that break in airflow. And that's the, so that is my calculation. Now I wanna show right here when it says 50 to 70, 100 to 150, what it's saying is you calculate as if one air mover could do 50 square feet. And again, as if it could do 70 square feet. That's what I'm saying is, you know, I'm, I'm calculating it two ways, as if it could do this or as if it could do that. And this is also important. Always round up, you don't round off. So if I do the math and it says you get 14.7 air movers, that's 15 air movers. If it says 14.1 air movers, that's 15 air movers. It says this is the minimum, so you always round up. 
Now, I don't get into double decimals, right? It's like, oh, it's 14.000036 error movers. I get to put another. No, no, no. That's not, I think that's a little kill. So I just go one decimal, even though it doesn't say in there how far you go with that. All right. So I want to kind of give you a visual of what I'm talking about. So here's my room. And I made this intentionally 10 by 35 for a reason so I can show what it is. So because of that, because it's 10 by 35, if it's 10 feet this direction and five feet that direction, that's 50 square feet. So if I get one air mover every 50 square feet on this one, I'd add one air mover to start. It always gets one air mover because it's a room. You always start with that one. It's 50 square feet. I get an air mover. And then there's another 50 square feet, another one, another one, another one, another one, and another one. If you get one air mover every 50 square feet, then I would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. But what if the air movers I'm using are capable of doing more than that? They can do a bigger area. They can do 70 square feet. Well, now I'd get one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. And so I get five if I could do 70 square feet. If it would do 50 square feet, I got seven. So for that floor, I get five to seven air movers. So that's what we're talking about is different air movers do different amounts. So you calculate as if it would do 50 square feet, and then you calculate again as if your air movers were capable of doing 70 square feet. So 10 by five is 350. I'd take 350 divided by 50. I'd take 350 divided by 70, and that would give me my five to seven air movers. And I've had people say, well, why not just go 60? Because I'm not trying to give an exact number. I'm trying to say you as a restorer need to know the range and then you decide what it is. And when we're doing any calculations, including this one, I always would like to remind you to remember the second grade and show your work. It's a lot easier getting paid. If I say I've got nine air movers in that room, okay, why? But when I say I went through the math and this room, I get between you know seven and 10 air movers, I was able to do it with nine. Great, there's the math, it's right there. This is a should, it's standard of care. Makes it pretty hard, not, you know, makes it easy for you to get paid, makes it easier for someone to pay you because you've done the math and shown that, that you know what it is. All right, so here's the calculation sheet. It's pretty straightforward, it's fill in the blanks. I wanna show that as we do this, um, there is a high and a low range. So this, this right here, it, these two numbers are always gonna be the same and these two numbers are always gonna be the same. No matter what they are, zero, whatever. This is actually is always going to be a one, always going to be one. But they'll be the same, and then I put the low and the high. And so the way it works is, we'll run through this together. Here's my scenario. I have a room. It's 14 by 16. It has a 10-foot ceiling. And I want. And it's 100% affected. Everything in there is wet, and I'm trying to figure out how many air movers, the range of air movers I get. Step number one, if I read it says, install one air mover in each affected room. Add this quantity to both high and low range. Here's the low, here's the high range. And so I put a one in both those boxes. Those two boxes always, every time, are going to be a number one, both of them. We actually talked about printing the number one in there. I don't remember why we didn't, but that's always going to be one. Okay, so I'm, I'm done with step number one. I'm on to step number two. Step number two says add one air mover for every 50 to 70 square feet, as if 50, as if 70. Uh, this includes floors and lower walls up approximately two feet, but only use the total floor footage, exclude the walls. That's what it's going to drive. You're not counting the walls. So I say, okay, uh, my, my floor is 14 by 16. That is 224 square feet. So I put 224 in both of these boxes. I divide it by 70. That's going to give me 3.2. I round up to four. It says low range. This says low range. So I put the four right there. 224 again divided by 50 is 4.4. If it does less area, I need more air movers. I round that up to five. This says high range. This says high range. I put my five right there. So for this room, I would get four to five air movers to dry my floor. Okay, done with step number two. Let's move on to step number three. This is a little convoluted, so bear with me here. Uh, walls and ceiling above two feet. Okay, so my ceiling is 14 by 16. It's 224 square feet. I could say on my walls, 14 plus 16 plus 14 plus 16 times the height. I'm doing each one individually just to show what we're talking about. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm excluding the bottom two feet. Remember, I don't cover the bottom two feet. It's a 10 foot high ceiling. My walls are 10 feet tall but I'm only going eight feet tall on each one of them because the bottom two feet, I'm not counting in there, all right? 
I have a wall right here that is 14 feet long and it's 10 feet tall, but I'm only cutting the bottom, the top eight feet. So 14 by 12 is 112. I have another 14 foot wall right here. So 14 by eight is another 112. I have a 16 foot wall right here. That's 16 by eight is 128. Another 16 foot wall right here, another 128. And so I add all those up. 112 plus 112 plus 128 plus 128 is 480 square feet of walls above two feet. I add my ceiling to my walls. So I got ceiling is 224, walls is 480, that's 704. I bring that up and I put it right here. 704 divided by 150 is 4.6, round up to five. That's my low range, that's my low range. It goes here. 704 divided again by 100 is my high range, 7.0, rounds up to seven. And uh, that's a high range, that's a high range. So it tells me to put it right here. So because it's a room, it gets an air mover. It gets another four to five because uh, of the floor. It gets another five to seven for the walls and ceiling. And then there's no inset or offset. So nothing in step number four. I add up both of those columns and I would get between 10 and 13 air movers for that room. Okay. Um, do a couple more of these real quick just to show you. All right. On this one, the floor and the back wall are 100% affected. Nothing else is, is wet. Probably defying some law of physics, but we're going with it. All right. So I'm saying, okay, my floor is totally wet. My wall is totally wet. How many air movers do I need? Okay. Let's put it in the chart. It's a room. It starts with an air mover. I put the same number in the high and low range because it gives me my range. So one is always a one. It tells me to do that. I just simply do it. Great. Number two is the floor. I get one air mover for every 50 to 70 square feet of wet floor. My floor is 36 by 14. That's 504 square feet total. I bring it up here into both of these. 504 divided by 70 is 7.2, rounds up to eight. That's the low range it goes here. 504 divided by 50 is 10.00 something, right? But I'm gonna stay at 10. Uh, so 10 right here on the high range goes right here. So I get eight to 10 air movers to dry that floor. My walls, uh, I have one wall and it is 36 by 12, but I, I knock off the bottom two feet. That was dried for free with the floor. So I take off that bottom two feet right there and I'm actually doing the top 10 feet. So it's 36 by 10, which is 360 square feet. I bring that up to these right here. Divide by 150 is 2.4, rounds up to three. Divided by 100 is 3.6, rounds up to four. If I get another three to four air movers for the wall right there. There are no insets or offsets. Those are both zero. I add up both of my columns coming down here and that would give me between 12 and 15 air movers for that, that room, for that wall and that floor in that room. Now, there is another calculation I want you to be aware of. And what it says on this is in areas, I'm just gonna read this, in areas where water has primarily affected the lower wall sections, so it's not above that two feet, and it's less than two feet out into the room, you forget everything I just said, and you just get one air mover every 14 linear feet. You don't start with an air mover, you just every 14 linear feet. So let me give you this scenario. I This room right here, water came from above, walls, floor, ceiling, everything is soaking wet. I'm gonna say, okay, this room, I'm gonna start with an air mover because it's a room. I'm gonna add another air mover for every 50 to 70 square feet of wet floor. I'm gonna add another air mover for every 100 to 150 square feet of wet walls and ceiling above two feet. The water went underneath this wall into a hallway, it went out 22 inches, seven inches, whatever, less than 24 inches, and it went down 63 feet. I simply take the 63 feet, I divide by 14, I get one air mover. They're, they're saying on average, you get an air mover will do 14 feet. So you get one air mover every 14 feet, you divide that out and round up. And that's what you get on that, okay? So the way you'd put that in, into effect is, if I've got this floor right here, as you see at the top, it's less than two feet into the room. It's 67 linear feet long. I'd simply say, okay, it tells me at the bottom, this is not in the chart, at the bottom it says one air mover every 14 linear feet. So 67 feet divided by 14, 4.7 rounds up to five air movers, okay? And it's one or the other. You don't use this. It's not like, well, this wall came all the way in, but that one's only two feet. It's one or the other in every room. It's either less than two feet and you do this or you do the other full ones. Yeah.